Welcome to Knauer HPLC Columns tutorial with the topic Stationary Faces Support Materials. Talking about HPLC column always involves the stationary face and also the modifications on the stationary face. When we talk about the stationary face, we mean the material that is filled inside the column. But not only the chemistry is very important, so the modification on the material, but the ground, the base material itself, can be very important. And this is what we want to talk about in this little presentation. So when you look inside a column, you always find some particles inside there. So typically these are nice spherical particles, and this is what we call the support material. And on this support material, we most often have also a chemical modification. So the support and the chemical modification are both equally important for the selectivity that you have on your column in the end. Knauer offers different stationary faces, and as we are talking now only about the base material, we have two different types of materials that we offer in HBLC columns. So the far most often used is silica gel. It's like, when you look at it, it's really like a sand. It's a SIOH material, most often really nice spherical material, as you can see it here. The other material that we also offer is a polymer gel. So this looks a little bit different. It is a copolymer network. In our case, it's polystyrene divinyl benzene copolymer. And you see these are also spherical particles, but they are polymerized. So it's a little bit different. And you can also imagine that the chemical um, yeah, characteristics differ a lot from silica gel. Silica gel is mechanically very stable. So whenever we are talking about high pressures and UHPLC, you might use a silica gel column. And for the polymer gel, it's the other way around. So you can imagine a polymer is something more soft. So when you are putting a lot of back pressure on your column and it's filled with a polymer gel, you might compress it. So polymer gel is really mechanically not as stable as silica gel, and it's important to notice that when you're working with a polymer gel column, you have to watch your back pressure very carefully. But the advantage is that the polymer gel has a really, really high pH stability. So for silica gel, you can imagine going down to very low pH or up to very high pH can be difficult. For polymer gel, as it is a copolymer network, it's really stable. So you can use here nearly the whole range of pH values that you can imagine. But let's have a closer look. So silica gel is just the base material and you use this base material for the most popular modes in HPLC. So whenever you're using reversed phase, normal phase, the hillock mode or ion exchange, these are columns based on silica gel. On the other hand, we have the polymer gel columns and in the Knauer world, we use them for typical ion exclusion and ligand exchange mechanism columns. They are also used most often for GPC and SEC columns and also for um, yeah, ion chromatography. But this is something that is not very common in the Knauer world. So we are most often working with a different species here. And if we now um, take a look at the distribution, how often which column is used or maybe questioned at Knauer, you see that silica gel has really, really the most important role. So these are um, percentages of numbers of columns sold in the last years. So it's um, around 94% silica gel based columns and only 6% polymer gel columns. Maybe this is also caused by the high stability of a polymer gel column. So when you um, buy such an ion exclusion column, 
it lasts for a lot of years, typically, if you are using it completely right. And silica gel columns, maybe they are not as stable and cannot be used about such a long lifetime. Okay, but now let's have a closer look at silica gel columns. Here again, the distrib distribution of numbers sold in the last years at Knauer. You can see that the reversed phase columns are really the most often used ones. So this is something that we can also see on the worldwide market. So reversed phase is still, yeah, the HBLC mode that is most often used. And there are also, yeah, the most columns, the most diversity of columns you can get. These are silica gel based reversed phase columns. They are followed by columns for normal phase and hillock. And yeah, ion exchange columns don't play really a role at Knauer, but this is also caused by our focus. When we are now looking at the silica gel itself, and maybe about what is really important to compare columns from one competitor to another, or to know where the selectivity of a column comes from, you can also start to compare the silica gel, so the base material itself. Every silica gel has um, numbers for the metal content. So whenever you have a silica gel, it's not 100% SiOH. There's also uh, always a little metal content inside. And you can imagine the more metal you have, the more polar the face gets. So this is something um, really important to compare if you want to, um, yeah, to exchange a column maybe with another one please have a look at the metal content of the ground silica gel. This is a number typically, um, yeah, the vendor of the column will give you. Also, the particle shape is really important. So I told you in the beginning, most often you have a nice spherical shape of, um, yeah, the single particles. But there are still some materials on the market. They are much cheaper and they are just not spherical, but broken materials. So often they are still used in preparative cases because there is not so important to have a complete uniform shape of a particle. And still, when you compare one face to another, you have to regard the particle shape. Um, the next one that is really, really important is the pore size. So we are talking here about silica gel that is totally porous. So every single particle has a lot of pores inside. And they give you, the vendors give you the, yeah, the norm, nominal pore size. So it's, um, yeah, the value typically seen over all the particle. And they can differ a lot. So the smaller um, the pore size gets, of course, the smaller your analyte has to be because it has to penetrate the pores so that you get, um, yeah, a good separation, a good um, resolution on your column. And the higher the pore size gets, so the larger the pores are, the lower the total surface of your um, particle gets. This is also really uh, important to know because it influences um, the selectivity of the column in the end a lot. So this is what we mean when we talk about the specific surface. It is directly rela related to the pore size. And it is really an important factor because the length of your column is defined. So the path length the uh, analyte has to travel through is defined not only by the outer dimensions of the column, but also by the pore size and the specific surface of every particle. So please keep all of this in mind. You see, this is already a lot of uh, stuff to regard, but we are now only talking about the silica gel. Still, there will be a modification on this particle. So, for example, when you're looking at reversed phase particles, they are not pure silica gel. They have a modification on it. So the type of phase, for example, if it is a C18 column or C8, makes a lot of difference. And also if there is an end capping or not. The type of the modification also defines again the pore size. So you can imagine if you have in the beginning a really large pore size, but you bring a lot of modification on it. So the molecules for the modification are really big. The pore sizes get smaller because you bring a lot of stuff on your particle. 
So again, regard the pore size that is really there in the end after the modification. Of course, the overall chemistry is really important. So which modification type you have. And when we talk about reverse phase columns, I would always recommend to regard the carbon content. So for example, a C18 column will have a lot more carbon on it than a C8 column, just because the C chains are longer. But this can also differ between different C18 columns. So please have in mind all of this that we saw here defines in the end the selectivity of your column. So I know it's a lot, um, but I think every vendor and also Knauer will help you if you need, for example, a replacement for an existing column um, to regard all of these facts. Okay, on the other hand, there are polymer gel based stationary phases. As you saw, it's only around 6% of the Knawa columns sold in the last years. And really nearly all of them were these iron exclusion columns. These are columns typically used for um, analysis of organic acids and sugars and carbohydrates. So typically used in the food industry. They are really interesting because they are so long lasting and because the GPC, SEC and IC columns don't play a major role for Knauer, I will focus now on these iron exclusion columns. So when you want to compare them to another column, again, you have to regard different um, facts of the polymer gel itself. So on the one hand, the type of the polymer, the copolymer network, of course, there are used a lot of different yeah, types of ground polymer um, for the columns. So here already the chemistry can differ a lot. Again, the particle size, but also the cross linkage is very important. So here you don't have a characterization by a pore size, but by a cross linkage. That means in your polymerization process, the chemist can um, yeah, figure out how much cross linkage you have, if it's 6%, 8% or 10%. And this defines something like a pore size in the silica gel world. It's defined by the cross linkage in the polymer world. But again, also here you bring something on the base material of the polymer. So you also do um, put a type of face on it and maybe also an end capping. You have for these ligand exchange ion exclusion columns, different ionic forms and different chemistries you can bring on the surface. So this is again something you have to regard all of these points, make in the end the selectivity of your columns. So I know we talked about a lot of different um, yeah, things here, facts, but also words like reversed phase, light ligand exchange and something like that. If you want to know more about modifications of columns, there will be different videos for you. So this one just wanted to focus on the differences of different columns based on different column materials. So just feel free to watch the next videos and you will maybe learn a lot more about the modifications of columns.